morning. Good morning, Faith. Good morning. Thanks, Tim. The Mechatronic System Design course is a multidisciplinary course combining mechanical, electrical, computer, and control engineering disciplines throughout the design process and was developed by Professor Kevin Craig. Our team project was to improve human mobility and accessibility, similar to Dean Kamen's Segway. We designed and developed a maneuverable, two-wheeled bouncing platform capable of both human and object transport. Our project really highlights the design prototype deploy process. In the design phase, we first derived a mathematical model of the mechanical system, and then create a simulation using the LabVIEW simulation module. These computer simulations allow us to explore and understand the vehicle dynamics. We went through several different design iterations for picking just the right one. Thanks to our simulations, we were able to go from design to build to testing the control system without any physical trial and error. Our simulations indicated that we needed a high bandwidth tilt sensor in order to control the vehicle. Unfortunately, no single inertial sensor could provide the bandwidth that we needed. A MEMS gyroscope could satisfy our higher frequency needs, while capacitive inclinometer would meet our low frequency response needs. We designed and verified through simulation a method of fusing these two measurements together. Using sensor fusion and LabVIEW 8.20, we were able to create a virtual sensor from two existing sensors. The next phase of our project was building the prototype. Now, we didn't want to just jump in and use high powered motors without first making sure our simulations were correct. To validate our simulation model, we built a small prototype shown here called the Light Object Transport Vehicle, or LATVI. It uses two independently driven DC brushed motors to control speed and steering. As Teresa was talking about, data from an inclinometer and a gyroscope are fused together in software to generate a very high bandwidth of the system's uh, tilt. Additionally, optical encoders mounted on each motor shaft measure the system's position, velocity, rate of turn, and heading. Using an NI DAC card and system ID techniques, we were able to refine our um, simulation model to make sure it accurately reflected the real world hardware. The control system for the LATV is an NI DAC card attached to a laptop running LabVIEW under Windows XP. We were able to reuse the same simulation loop, control system, and sensor fusion REIs that we developed in our de design phase. All we had to do was configure our simulation loop to use a real-time clock and then add real-world I.O. with DACMX. Because of this, it was very easy for us to rapidly prototype a control scheme in simulation and then deploy it to hardware. Tim, all in all, it took us about a month and a half to go from um, modeling, analysis, all the way to a prototype. The LATV worked out so well, we decided to build a full-scale implementation called the Human Object Transport Vehicle, or HATV. Hmm. So it took you about a half a semester to get the design and the prototype working. Mm -hmm. How long did it take you to do the real thing? Well, Tim, remember, we were full-time students, so it took us longer than we'd hoped. It took us three whole days to go from unassembled <laughs> components to our first ride. <laughs> Even though the Hotvee is much larger, this is made possible because all of its components are functionally identical to its little brother. This meant that we were able to reuse the same simulation loop, control system, and sensor fusion VIs from the LATV. Remember, those VIs originally came from the design phase. Instead of a laptop with a DAC card, the HOTV control system is deployed using a compact Rio real-time controller and a four-slot chassis with a three million gate FPGA as the control hardware. Now, we used all standard compact RIO modules to handle all of our I.O. needs. A high-speed digital module brings in our quadrature encoded data. An analog input module brings in all of our sensor data. A high-voltage analog input module monitors the, the power systems. And an analog output module sends commands to our motor drives. Now, these motors can deliver almost four horsepower, and that equates to some serious amperage, which could cause noise problems in our sensors and control system. That's why compact RIO's built-in signal conditioning and, and um, Electrical isolation is really critical. Additionally, using shared variables, LabVIEW 8.20 and a wireless router, we were able to extend the HOTVIEW's control system to take commands from a remote system running LabVIEW. This way, you could pilot the vehicle um, in a dangerous or a hazardous environment. I can even use this PDA to control it. Well, I wish we really had a live HOTV system to show this morning. So. Well, actually, Tim, we do. 
Nice. Is that? Yes. That's it? Yes, Tim, this is the real Hot V. Using distributed LabVIEW, Matt is controlling the Hot V remotely from his PDA. On another computer is my detailed performance data. <laughs> Sorry. I, I drive as well as Tim. You're a little crazy. <laughs> oh, be careful. I'm a good driver. <laughs> So go ahead, Tim. All the danger was supposed to be in that demo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you ahead, want me to it. try it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> After that? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> OK. When you Here first, we go. One minute. Before you do that, since we've seen how you drive. Ah. OK. Only if this helmet's been tested by the Snell Memorial Foundation with Compact yep. DAC. OK. It has? All right. Oh, yeah. All right. Who's going to catch me if I fall? <laughs> Can I try backwards? Sure. Do you want? I think Dean Kamen would be proud of me. <laughs> Probably a little embarrassed. <laughs> By the way, don't forget Dean Kamen is speaking tomorrow. He's a very prolific inventor and very inspiring to scientists and engineers around the world. So uh, don't miss that one. Let me see if I can get it over here. All right. So you built this entire thing from the ground up in one semester. Yeah, Tim. We went from modeling and analyzing it to d designing, prototyping, building and deploying it all in a period of three, three months. And that was with a full class load. We were able to reuse the same control system VIs throughout the entire process. We were able to focus on designing and implementing a complex mechatronics project without delving into the low-level implementations of subsystems like TCP IP communications and microcontroller development and programming. Hmm. Uh, now, I heard from some of your colleagues in the audience that maybe the real goal of this transport system was to transport the beer keg around campus. Uh, Is that right? I don't know about that. Uh, well, <laughs> awesome application. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Teresa. Thank <laughs> you.